What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the Tyler Creates YouTube channel. My name is Tyler. Hope you all are having a blessed day. In today's video, we're going to be doing kind of a update video and also me just talking about what's going on with the farm and what my plans kind of are and just kind of an update video. Uh, we're getting close to a thousand subscribers, so we'll be talking about that too. But let's jump right into it. It's a super nice day out today. Just got done raining last night. Thank the Lord. We needed rain so bad. I got a spider web on me. First update, a 77 needs a new carburetor. Uh, so uh, it also, th this truck needs some things. Um, if you don't know, this is my 1977 Ford F-250 camper special uh, that I pulled out of my field after being, well, pretty much abandoned for 13 years, I think. Sat in my backfield basically half my life. So uh, it sat for a very long time. Uh, it's been in the family for years and years. My grandpa drove it, my dad drove it. It came from my uncle. They used to use it as a parts truck or a run for run to get parts for their business. And now it's mine after sitting in the field. Uh, if you haven't watched the series on this truck, uh, there'll be a little card somewhere up here. You can go watch that. But uh, basically pulled this truck out of my backfield. Had been sitting for since I think 2008. Uh, so and I did the revival in 2020, 2021. Uh, so uh, the foreign carburetor I have on here just isn't cutting it. It's a piece of junk. Go figure. Uh, it's one of those things that turned out to not be a good choice to buy. So uh, I also need I need a carburetor, uh, and I also think that I have a vacuum leak in my valley pan because I reused my valley pan, and the valley pan was junk. I should have never reused it. I should have bought another one. Uh, but we're gonna start off probably with the carburetor because that carburetor is junk. I had to drill holes. I was it's kind of an experimental carburetor but I drilled holding holes in the throttle blades and it just doesn't work. So and I'm also not driving it because gas is so much because I can't tune the carburetor. So I can't like this thing could get like three miles to the gallon. It could be lean. I just, I, I don't feel comfortable driving it right now. And it's not that I'm afraid. I just, I don't, I do not trust the carburetor. So, and when you have something as major of a car as a carburetor that you don't trust, kind of a big deal so uh, it's just chilling uh, I'd like to do some things with it carburetor one of them uh, second I'd like to get uh, uh, door gaskets because the doors well this door actually doesn't do it one of the doors shakes it's loose and I did adjust the bolt the door bolt in here I did adjust that bolt right there um, and it helped a lot but I just like to get new ones of these here these uh, on door i mean you can tell they're junk and there's a lot of actually the uh, main reason i want to replace those is the main reason i want to replace those is there a lot there is lots of wind noise with this truck when you're driving it down the road the little bit that i have drove it it's quite loud uh the cab is actually quite loud with wind and it happens to leak somewhere right in here and it's very loud like right next to your ear if you don't know the panels the this pillar sits like right next to your ear so it's a little loud um obviously i want to get this thing to where i can go do some camping trips in it and take the camper well i totally forgot i gotta film an update video on the camper uh so i also need new tires for this thing because these are passenger car tires and if you don't know on a three-fourth ton rear end i believe which is an eight lug rear end i think that's right is that right I gotta look that up real quick. So I looked that up real quick. Three fourth or eight lug is three fourth ton to one ton, I do believe. Uh, I, I think this is a three fourth ton. It's a camper special, so it might be a one ton rear end. I don't know. It's a Dana 61 with eight lug. Um, but I don't haul stuff in this. So I got these tires from this guy that had them on a Tacoma. And I figured, okay, well, I'm not gonna be hauling stuff. Uh, and I'm not gonna be hauling stuff. At least I thought I wasn't going to be. So I got these, actually, the really nice Dunlops. Uh, is that right? Oh no, they're Hankooks. Never mind, Jiminy Christmas. These Hankook Dynapros, and they're basically brand new. The date code on them is uh, 32 of 20, so the 32nd week of 2020, or the 32nd, yeah, 32nd week of 2020. Um, and they are, P24575 R16s with 109S rating, which I believe that rating is 1,100 pounds per tire. But the issue is, is they are not a car, they're not a truck tire. So, 
So the heaviest thing I hauled in this thing was a lawnmower and it was actually that blue lawnmower that I traded for the combine. Um, and they do great on the road. If you really, so you really shouldn't ever run um, P rated tires on a truck. Uh, but if you, if it's like a show truck that you're never gonna haul stuff in, like if it's a truck that's, you know, going to car shows and it's restored, if you're an older guy, um, P rated tires make the ride really nice. I do have to say the ride on this truck is, is it's quite, quite comfortable. Uh, I think their PSI is either 60 or 80. Um, and the guy said they came off a really nice Tacoma and he used them for overlanding. There's a cord in the front that's popped, which is weird because they're definitely not bulged out. I don't know what's going on there. I don't know if he popped the cord and I never noticed it, but uh, there's one, I think. I don't even know if I can find it. It's so hard to find on the tire, but the GVRW is 7,900. It says the GVRW front, that's gross vehicle weight. It's 3,250, 300. So I think the most, I think the GVRW is what the truck can haul. I, I don't think this truck weighs 8,000 pounds. That would be two, four, six, eight. That'd be four tons? That's not, no, that's weird. I, that doesn't even sound right. Uh, I think these trucks weigh like, I think I looked online and they weigh like 3,500 pounds, 4,000, 4, something like that. Alrighty, so I just went in and did some research. Um, I was actually super wrong. Uh, a 109 index on a tire is not 1,100 pounds, it's rather 2,271 pounds. So technically, these tires could handle 9,000 pounds. All of them put together could handle 9,000 pounds. That's the load index. The load rating, the load range, I can't find. I, I don't, I don't know what the load range is on these tires. Uh, they're passenger tires, which is weird because there's no passenger car that's gonna weigh 9,000 pounds. I don't even think like an Escalade would weigh that much. <clears throat> so I don't, I don't know. They inflate to 51 psi and their maximum load per tire is 2,271 pounds. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I genuinely, I don't know. Uh, they're P rated, <clears throat> but there's no uh, P rated tire, or there's no P rated vehicle that, there's no passenger car that's gonna need that much weight. Um, I do believe the difference is the uh, actual ply in the tire, the cords, I believe there's less cords or they're less strong. Um, so anyhow, it needs new tires. I probably, sh I'm not going to, we're just going to say I'm definitely not going to take a camper, my the camper and camp with this thing with those tires because I just don't trust them. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure enough. I, I just don't trust them. They're not truck tires. Um, which is kind of confusing. Tire companies shouldn't be able to make a P-rated tire that su supports 2,200 pounds at 51 PSI. That, that means it just makes no sense. Like, I, I just don't, that makes zero sense. So, uh, 9,000 pounds. This truck couldn't even haul 9,000 pounds, I don't think. <laughs> so, I, I don't know. I genuinely have no clue. But, um, they're great tires. They're, they're, I got, I got them for a guy that was using them for overlanding uh, they're brand new. He said he never used them. He said he wanted some more aggressive tires. I got them for 160 bucks for all four tires. So, uh, great deal. Wish I could use them. I just, I don't know. I don't, I just don't trust them. So, uh, maybe you guys could all tell me. There's the, there's the rating right there. P24575 R16s with a 109S. The S means they can go 112 miles an hour. It says E4 on it, which is for the Euro market. Made in Korea. Uh, it says max load is 2,271 pounds, max PSI is 51. So I don't know. Um, so the ones in the front definitely mush a little bit more, but again, I, it's not like the front of the truck weighs 2,700 or 2,200 pounds. I, I don't know. Anyways, so I'm doing rambling and a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, I'd love to drive the truck around. I'd love to use it. I want to. I really want to go like camping and bring you guys along and do like a maiden voyage with the truck. That'd be such a sick video, but I can't. So, um, yeah, let's move on. Alrighty, the next vehicle we're going to be talking about is my 1987 Audi 5000 S. This vehicle is currently up for sale. 
Sorry if it's blown out. Um, so here she is. She's been sitting for a real long time out back. Uh, she's for sale right now. Uh, I didn't really want to sell this vehicle, but it's a means to an end. I'm not a huge Audi guy. Uh, not really, never really was a Volkswagen guy. I'm a Mercedes-Benz guy. I really like Mercedes-Benz, but nonetheless, this is a great, this thing's super cool, and if I had the money, I would keep it. If I had the money, I would keep it and get it going, but it runs and drives and brakes, but it definitely has got some quirks and things that are the issue, that are an issue. A whole bunch of the clear coats coming off because someone did an awful job clearing it. Uh, you guys haven't seen this car for a very long time, but it is, I assure you, the same Audi it was. It has just been sitting for quite some time. It's got speed ray webs in it. I just pulled it down here and washed it out. So uh, I got the back seat out of it, so I can show whoever that it's got a decently new battery. Back seat goes in, just have it pulled out. It's like two bolts. Um, so show you guys the engine bay of this real quick uh yeah you know the more i look at this vehicle while it is a relic and it is a very cool car um i just am not an audi guy and i'd rather have it go to someone who is an audi person or who would you know take more care of it than i would because this thing's been sitting in the sun and not doing anything uh, I, it's got old gas in it it runs rough because of the old gas like that's how long it's been sitting uh, I've started it here and there. Uh, after this last time, it probably sat for a good eight months. So uh, it runs and drives though. Needs some random things, but I'm hoping to send the Audi as a means to uh, get some other things in the fleet. So um, yeah, pray that the Lord that, that car sells. And I, I want it to go to somewhere where they're not gonna destroy these cars. Believe it or not, even though they are pieces of junk, uh, they tend to have issues. Uh, it's a relic and it's super rare because so many of them had issues, they've actually become a very rare car. There's not very many of them out there. Uh, and it's not a Quattro, but that makes it even more rare. You know, it'd be super cool if it had a turbo on it, but it doesn't, it's a NA motor. So four door sedan, that car hopefully will, hopefully this will be the last time you all see that thing on the channel. Uh, I would really, Really like to see the Audi go, it's the Lord's willing. So, um, yeah, let's move on to the combine. Never really showed you guys much of the property. I live on five acres in Oregon. Got lots of blackberries. Um, so. Here we have the combine right where I left it um, the old Massey Harris from the 1950s I love this combine this thing is basically the first piece of uh, actual uh, farm equipment I've ever purchased and while I haven't farmed yet I genuinely plan on getting this thing back in the field uh, I am gonna do farming. Uh, I really actually really like farming actually a lot. Watch lots of YouTube videos on it. I quite enjoy it. I like the concept. Adam and Eve are farmers and I believe it's in our nature. It's why people have gardens and I think if everyone wanted to secretly they'd all have giant farms. So uh, I really like this thing a lot. Um, so here it is. Uh, I'll show you guys the motor a little bit later but as you can see the motor is currently not back there. Uh, I need to test this paint and see if it's lead paint because I thought about shooting it down with some red. No, what was it? I was gonna paint the motor. That's what I was gonna do. Um, but there's usually cats living under it. Feral, nasty, disgusting cats that roam around. <laughs> nope, no cats. So it's basically as I left it. Um, so the plans for this thing, it needs all new fluids. Uh, and it needs uh, the F-140, the Continental F-140 motor, needs gaskets. And I haven't decided whether or not I'm doing piston rings yet on it. Uh, it's probably gonna need radiator fix. I think the radiator leaks. But yeah, uh, this thing's just, it's not. It's actually not a huge deal to get it running. Transmission's down there. It definitely, I'm sure, needs new fluid. Hopefully it's not rusty, but there's the 1950s Massey Harris, nowadays called Massey Ferguson. 35 combine 
uh, hopefully making a debut to the channel here very soon. That thing has been abandoned for a long time. Next up, hello, we got the GT6000 right here. Um, in the last video you guys saw, uh, I fixed the main bearings, or I installed uh, piston rings in this thing. Um, I actually think I installed one of the piston rings upside down, but we're not going to talk about that. Uh, I don't remember installing it. Uh, there's a chamfer and you're supposed to install it a certain way, but this thing runs. I've actually moved it around a couple times. Um, the deck needs to be fixed, needs a tire. I talked about that all in that video. That video actually blew up. It's doing quite well certain right now. It's double what my videos normally get in views and the time span it has. So uh, this mower, I plan on actually keeping this mower. I love this mower, got it for free. Uh, this was a, definitely abandoned. I think the lady said this thing had not been ran in like 30 years. Uh, it sat out in the woods, like in the actual woods, for who knows how long. So, uh, I do plan on getting that thing running, so. Back here we have the 1985 Murray Garden Tractor with the 18 horsepower Briggs Twin, the opposed Briggs Twin. Uh, and it is currently waiting on a battery of all things. It just needs a battery and I believe that's ready to go. Uh, I'd also like to keep this thing. Um, having two garden tractors is kind of dumb, but I'd like to have this one be more of like a polling guarding tractor where like its specific purpose is not to mow lawns, but to like, I don't know, do ground prep or something. I don't know. I'd like to get a real tractor. That may be happening soon, just to let you all know. So we'll see about that. I might be getting rid of that. I'm not quite sure. I do like it a lot. I just have to figure out a way to justify having two garden tractors. Um, so, definitely a cool rig though. So, uh, currently waiting on a battery and then, you guys, you guys will see a video on this when I get the battery because I don't even know if it runs. I don't know if it has spark. I don't know any of that, so. There it is. And last but not least, with my blown out face, the vehicle that started the channel, my 2000 V6 Mustang that my dad gave me and that I fixed up and filmed probably some of my most famous videos on. I think most videos on this thing that are my how-to videos, which I don't really do anymore because I don't really like doing how-to videos. Uh, they get over, you know, I think I have a good number of videos that are over 10K in views, so that's super cool. Uh, I do want to drive this thing. Insurance for it's quite expensive. Last time I drove this insurance was 200 a month. Uh, and it definitely has some issues. It clunks, it needs an alignment, it needs to be lowered, it needs all of these things. Down the road, I would like to turn this thing into more of a performance, quote unquote, performance vehicle. Where it's, where it's well it's stock. I'd like it to be something that goes a little faster. Uh, I think you can throw a supercharger on these 3.8 liters. And that'd be really cool to put a supercharger on there. I could put a V8 in there, but everyone has a V8. Everyone under the sun has a V8. So uh, it's just been sitting. I've moved it around a number of times since you guys last saw it. it. It's actually been a long time since you guys have seen this thing. Let me pop the hood on it here for y'all. It has been quite some time since, since I last had this on the channel. Yeah, um, fret not, it still is here and it's still a Mustang, it's just a neglected Mustang. Uh, there's the white intake I painted a long time ago. It's funny, watching these videos, I was very immature when I filmed these videos. I wasn't very, I don't know, I was just kind of a, I was a different person back then. I'm definitely, definitely a lot different of a guy now, so, um. But those videos did make the channel, and the Lord has blessed them, and he's blessed the videos with this car. My dad gave me this car. Uh, it definitely needed a lot of work. Pulled the transmission out of it, done lots to it, buffed it, even though it doesn't look like it. Um, but there she is, sitting waiting for, for me to make a million dollars and be able to afford insurance on all my vehicles, so. 
I mean, the thing is, if I were to put insurance on this and my truck, it would be the equivalent of like probably 350 a month. Um, so, and it's with a reputable insurance company. So yeah, I just can't afford that right now. I would rat like, not only can I not afford it, I would rather take that money, like the 200 a month, uh, and I'd rather put it into building the channel and like filming videos for you guys, because um, this is one of those projects where I'd like to be making like a decent amount of income to be able to like actually make good videos for you guys and not be cobbling stuff together. So uh, this car definitely will not be leaving. This car will probably be a lifelong car. I don't ever, I'm, I'm, I'm a Mustang guy at heart. I'm a Ford guy at heart, y'all know that, uh, and this car, is the first car I've ever owned, actually. Uh, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, the Mustang's the first vehicle I've ever owned, so. Uh, if you guys don't know, the truck right where that Suzuki's sitting, a little closer, I'll actually go show you guys. I never showed you in the other video. This right here is where the truck sat for 13 years, I think. Sat here every single day next to that destroyed Cadillac. I just moved that mower there. Um, but yeah, the truck sat here for a real long time. I'll see if I can't post some pictures. Actually, I do have pictures of this. I'll see if I can't post some pictures of this truck, what it looked like. Maybe I could find some where it sat here. Um. Yeah, it's interesting. You never think that you're gonna revive a vehicle that you walk around your entire life, and next thing you know, it's next thing you know, it's being revived. So there's the Mustang and all of its glory. Definitely need to get some coil coilovers for this thing. It is quite ugly the way it sits. Um, but this really isn't my worry right now. This vehicle kind of just exists. Um, I can't think about it because I would love to drive this car. I would love to go on drives. But my truck right now is kind of my baby. So the Mustang will be, but the Mustang will be my baby when I have the time and money to invest into making it my own. While I've done things to this vehicle, it's definitely nowhere like the truck. Like if you all know, I mean, I literally have, I recorded an entire series of videos of me rebuilding the engine, like in depth, 351 modified, you can like work, you can probably rebuild a 351 by my videos, so. And I've done lots of other stuff to the truck. Not to say that I plan on learning this vehicle as well as I know the, I plan on knowing this vehicle as well as I know the um, 351. And I know it quite well, but anyhow. I love the Mustang, and it's just chilling back here. I need to get a car cover on it, I have one for it, but sounds good, starts up, runs a little rough because it's got old gas in it, but. Yeah, that's the update for the Mustang. Next up, the camper. This is my side area where our goats are. Never really filmed any of this, but I figure if I'm gonna be doing more videos of farm life, which I do plan on doing, uh, I mean, uh-oh. Why is there chicken feathers everywhere? Is there a chicken under? Oh my gosh. Uh, Fluffy, are you okay? Are you all right? Come here. If y'all don't know, I saved this chicken's life from a chicken hawk. I was installing fence one day and she was over dirt bathing under a tree and a giant chicken hawk attacked her. And I was standing on the other side of the fence, down in the goat's pen, and I jumped the fence. I like straight up standing jumped it. Chased the chicken hawk off. He lacerated her back, probably up about that far under her back. 
or it did. Cut all of her feathers off, did an emergency patch me and my dad did with band-aids and duct tape. Kept her in a cage for weeks. She healed right up, so she's a good old chicken. She's a very old chicken, so. I never showed you guys any of this. These are our goats. We recently just had our oldest goat die. His name was Whitey. He was like a, Ni a Nigerian goat, kinda. I can't remember what they're called. They have like a horse's jaw. They're quite a different goat than these guys here. Um, so that one right there is curly. That one's brownie. And then our brown goat. And then there's a black goat in there we call like Blackie. Very simple names. Uh, so we've recently had quite a few animals die. Goats are very hard to take care of. If you ever do farming, don't start with goats. Letting you know, they are they are quite difficult to maintain. They're very fragile animals, actually. Most people don't realize that, but uh, yeah. And then the chickens, the ladies and the rooster. I've never really filmed any of this, so I figured, hey, you know what? I like filming this content, so. Where are you all at? There's Mr. McGee, the man himself. He's nice, usually. I've held him lots, lots and lots. Rooster, you quit it. I'll grab you. Come here. He gets all beefcake, but he's really a big, big soft baby. I've held him lots. Key to taming a rooster is you hold them lots and lots and lots. Him and his ladies, all these ladies. Oh, you guys probably want out. What are you doing? What are you doing? Don't you peck me. Don't you peck me. I'll get you. One time I tell you all he's being nice, he's being a little butthead. Quit. You quit. He's trying to be whatever you call it. I think he's only ever pecked me once. He tries to exert his dominance. What are y'all doing? They've never really seen the camera before because I've never ever filmed them. And last, we have my 1980s caveman camper. Uh, this thing also requires lots of money. Um, it needs it needs lots of things. So uh, it's been chilling. Oh shoot! It rained. I wonder if it leaked in here. Still stinks. I need to get um, some stuff for it. And you know, I was originally gonna go camping with this camper and I realized like I was gonna do some more backwoods camping. And I realized that it's folks. Okay. I realized this camper is a little large to be going like backwoods. I thought it was actually a small camper, but it's, it's quite a large camper. So, um, oh yeah, that's dripping. Oh yeah, it's dripping. Well, I need to fix that right now. <laughs> Let's, you guys wanna go for a ride in here? Still stinks, still disgusting. <sighs> Dang it. Okay. Well, you know, it's been open so long in here it actually don't smell near as bad. Oh, I don't even know if you guys can see. Hold on a sec. Let's see here. What's the easiest fix we can do? Let's unravel this. Bloop. And we'll just set that down there. Figures that it would leak. I think the reason it actually leaked is because I forgot to close this. Man, this thing's disgusting. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Aside from that, it would be a sweet camper to keep and fix up. Um, it would actually be quite sweet. So, it just needs another go around cleaning. It needs some roof parts fixed. Like, it's this roof over here above the bed's junk. This floor's junk, which that stuff's not a huge deal, actually. Uh, the main things are it needs to be painted with some kills, smell blocker stuff. Um, person smoked in here for like five million years uh, and it needs like it just needs some modifications it's actually not that hard to do uh, I just have been waiting to do it so I've got other things that I've been doing but rest assured I do hope that this camper comes back here very soon uh, yeah 
So you can see how much the person smoked. If you haven't watched the previous videos, uh, I did a video where I cleaned this thing. You can tell that's where I scrubbed with vinegar and that's tar from cigarette smoke. You can see the difference in color right through there. So it's quite dirty. I've done all these walls and all these. I think this is the only spot I haven't done and up there. So yeah, this thing's just basically been, I don't even know what that stuff is. What the heck is that? Oh, that's window cleaner. Shoot, I didn't realize I bought that one. Uh, okay. So we'll go ahead and close this up. There we go. Here's the combine motor. Well, basically the whole back of the combine. I guess it's kind of embarrassing to show, but when you don't have the money to do stuff and you're unwilling to get a full-time job because I hate full-time jobs, like they make me miserable. That's why I dropped out of high school is because I don't want to wake up and have every day be Groundhog's Day. I would rather struggle and fight along rather than be in the rat race. So, uh, combine motor sitting here. There's all the combine and other parts. Uh, this thing's actually real close to being reinstalled. I think it's probably about 200 bucks away, maybe 300. Uh, I need a gasket kit, like I think I said, and I might be doing piston rings. I'm not quite sure, but yeah, this is where it all sits right here, awaiting fixing the, actually the blocks outside, but well, that about does it for the update video and what's going on. I kind of wanted to just talk and just talk. Um, I guess I could actually set you guys maybe on the hood here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that about does it for the update video. This was kind of an odd video to film. I've never ever filmed any of my more private life. Um, and at the end of the day, it is 0.1% of my day. But uh, I don't know, I've just been kind of almost afraid or nervous to film more than just like my stuff. But at the end of the day, it's like, I'd like to move more into that content in terms of like, I don't plan on stopping doing car content and automotive content. The lawnmower stuff's kind of a weird moment where it's like, I named the channel Tyler Creates so I can film whatever I want. Basically like whatever's going on in my life is what I film at that time. And right now it just so happens to be lawnmowers. Um, but the angle for this channel is to be able to do automotive content and more like camping content and uh, farming content. Really, really want to get into farming content uh, and like all that stuff down the road. But uh, right now we are just in our own little world here trying to get stuff done and I'm trying to make content for you guys. We're about to hit a uh, thousand subscribers. We're at 960 and that's super exciting because I will finally get paid for my labor. I will get some fruit for my labor. Uh, if you guys don't know, even though I'm a extraordinarily small channel I have invested a lot of money in YouTube uh, and it's just so happens to be what I do um, uh, so I enjoy filming content I think it's quite quite fun to film um, I've had my moments where I've been like not sure to film my face and you know I've had some weird moments on YouTube but uh, at the end of the day I really do enjoy making the content for you guys because at the end of the day I'm trying to inspire younger people to go out and try stuff and do stuff uh, seems like nowadays a lot of young people just kind of are floating through life and I feel like maybe as someone who's, I don't know, I've had a lot of time to think about the uh, things of life uh, and I'm very thankful for that. I'm very thankful that I've been gifted the ability to be able to navigate and not go on paths that are bad. Uh, the Lord's kept me quite safe in my travels in life. Uh, we're getting really close to a thousand sub subscribers. Uh, YouTube's been doing some weird stuff. I don't know, you guys have seen the crazy, I'm sure you've probably seen at least one or two creators make some interesting content about the platform and it's definitely doing some weird stuff. Like the last video I uploaded, which was uh, installing piston rings in the GT6000. Uh, on my front page, it was showing that it was at 67 views, uh, which was the same with my content page. There's two places where you can go look. Uh, and then all of a sudden it changed. It went to 30 views on one page, but then you go look and it's still at 67 views on another page. I don't know. 
and I, I don't know why it's not pushing my content. I would, I'd like to think that my content's pretty good. I don't, I, I quite, I try quite hard to film good content. Um, and I'd say I've, I'm getting the hang of it like a lot more. I, I'd say I'm a pretty good at filming stuff, but uh, I don't know. Uh, who knows? Maybe it's because I say, may the Lord Jesus bless you. I don't know. At the end of the day, I, I really don't know. I'm kind of waiting for something to happen because I feel like uh, I've uploaded, this will be probably my 83rd or 84th video uploaded to the platform. And all my videos have been pretty consistent and good I, in terms of consistent, like they've all been in the same realm of what's going on. So other than that, I'm kind of just rambling, wanted to give you guys an update. I'm super excited for a thousand subscribers, genuinely really looking forward to it. Uh, you know, working is a gift from the Lord, whether it be anything uh, except for bad things. but. YouTube, this is a huge gift that I'm able to have, the nice things that I have, all the content that I film. Uh, you know, there's not very many 22-year-olds out there that own the vehicles that I own, so I'm um, super blessed to have that. But uh, other than that, wanted to film a little update video. This was kind of a hard video to film because I usually don't film videos like this, but uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you did, drop a like, uh, that'd be super helpful. Um, super helpful maybe share the content if you got someone that you think would like watching my mug uh, <laughs> you could send them a video or something I don't know but uh, yeah other than that may the Lord Jesus bless you and watch over you in all your ways hope you guys enjoyed the video thank you for watching catch you guys in the next one peace out God bless